Hello, thank you for joining me. This is the third of my lockdown videos. The first one was about train spotting. The second one was about track bashing. Now, this one is nothing to do with railways or trains at all. It's to do with one of my other interests, because those of you who watch my videos will know, although we do quite a lot of train stuff, we also you know, go to historic sites. Now, one of the places we quite often go to are National Trust properties. So I'm going to tell you today a bit about my way of visiting National Trust places. So you'll quite often see, you know, I, I go to National Trust places. I'm, I usually make a video in the gardens because it could be, you know, um, you, it's not so easy, say, to make one walking around a house um, without kind of disturbing everyone else. So I tend to make them in the gardens. Occasionally we have been into some of the houses. So have a look for my out for my National Trust videos. And once we get out of lockdown, There'll be quite a lot more but the one thing I wanted to show you is something else that hasn't really featured in my videos but it's one of my favourite things about the National Trust so we'll start this is the National Trust handbook it, it has every property every bit of countryside and you know it, it's a very useful book it tells you the year that National Trust acquired the site it tells you a few things about them so it, it's the all you need to know guide to visiting National Trust places so that's the guide but when it comes to going to them most National Trust places have their own stamp. And now I'm going to talk to you about passports, not passports to travel around the world, but National Trust passports. So here's mine. This is my current one. I've had quite a few. So um, what happens is when you go to a National Trust place that you haven't been to before, when you go for the first time, you get your passport stamp. So I'm just going to open it randomly. Um, and well, this one, admittedly, I haven't been to too many. But my first one was Raynham Hall in East London. So I went to Raynham Hall I got my, and I got my passport stamped. So what you do is you go through and you, you fill it up. Um, you can get my one's blue, you can get a pink one, that's my girlfriend's. Um, but I, I've done this all my life. So this is my first National Trust passport. So I'm going to show you the first property I went to. I don't know how well you can see that, but it was Arlington Court in 1989. Now the way it used to be was that they'd have a stamp and they'd effectively frank it by um, posting the property's stamp. What I've, d what they did was the stamps evolved. Um, the stamps originally were quite nice, with pictures of animals and stuff. But as they evolved, they became. It came a bit weird. I had like a stamp of Giant's Causeway when I went to Goddard's house in York. Um, I'm not sure if those two actually did get mixed up, but that kind of thing. So what I tend to do is I don't actually have the stamps anymore. I've adopted my own way. And um, I, I just stamped the place I've been in the middle. But it's a bit like train spotting. You can do it your own way. So that's how I do it. So I filled them up. So started with Arlington Court. My second one was Clifton, which we have made Henry's Adventures videos in. And I filled that one up. It started in 1989. The final property I went to was Cobley Woodland Garden in Wales in 1996. So what happens? I've been to 28 properties. So I was very proud of it. You know, I was still only a, quite a young child. Um, so what happens? You, um, well, the, the last page is missing, but you, you stamp on the last page. You send it off, which I can show you in my current one because it hasn't obviously been done yet. Uh, where are we? So now it's 30. But it says congratulations on visiting 30 properties. So you'll have it stamped there, stamp it here, send it off to them, and they send you a certificate. So in 1996, when I'd been, when I filled up this passport up by going to 28 properties, I got this, my certificate to say I've been to 28 properties. Now, some people will do that and stop there. Not me. I bought another one and I, you know, picked up from where I left off. So the first place on this one, Literally days, days after Cobley Woodland Garden in Wales, on the same holiday, I went to Aberdeleis Falls, which is near Neath in South Wales. It's an amazing place. It's a hydroelectric trip power station. I've been back since. Um, I have to go back again and make Henry's Adventures video. So when you go to a property the second time, you don't have it stamped. I have seen some people doing it, and that's cheating. So I don't agree with that. I have it stamped once every time I go to each property and a bit like train spotting, like trying to see every type of train or traveling or track best and traveling every bit of track. I'm going to go to every National Trust property. So I started this one in July 1996 with Lace Falls. And when did I finish it? I finished um, Hales Abbey 
in 2002. Hell's App is a funny one because it's got an English Heritage style stamp because it's owned by the National Trust but it's maintained by English Heritage. So there's a few like that where English Heritage and National Trust you know, collaborate. I don't think English Heritage does a passport like this. I've never seen one. If they did, I'd certainly buy it and I'll be doing the same thing. So once that one was filled up, I then moved on to this one. Now, the reason there's a post-it note is a couple of things I was going to show you in this one. Um, the passport, you can see, has changed. It's red. Um, unfortunately, the paper quality wasn't great and um, we had problems with the ink coming through. But to be fair, the National Trust don't make this one anymore. I think they realised so, you know, what I wanted to show you in this one is there's places I've got. I wouldn't quite say um, they don't exist anymore, but they you can't get the stamp. So the final one on this one was the shop in Stratford-upon-Avon. Now, I went there with my girlfriend last summer. I said to her, well, find a National Trust stop, sh shop. You can get your passport stamp. Well, there's no longer a National Trust shop there. So that's a stamp I've got you can't get anymore. So, you know, I think that's a shame. And then when we get on to my next passport, the design has changed now, it's green. I've got a few like that. Um, actually, this one's interesting because it starts, there's the National Trust of Scotland, which are very similar and basically do the same thing. It starts with Culloden Battlefield in Scotland. So I, you know, that was where I started this one. I obviously bought, in fact, it's on a piece of paper that I've stuck in, so I obviously went there not expecting to get any stamps, suddenly realised I was at Culloden Battlefield, had it done on a piece of paper and I stuck it in when I got home. So as for post-it notes, um, another one, York Shop. The shop is still there, but I'm sure when I asked them if they stamp passports, they said no. Um, if anyone from National Trust is watching and wants to confirm, does York, the shop at York still sh stamp passports? And they do, um, you know, please let me know, because um, my girlfriend hasn't had her one stamped and she has been in that shop, but they didn't seem to know anything about it when I went. Another interesting one, well, there's the shop in Wales. I'm not sure about that one. I'd like to think they still do. It's a different sort of stamp. It's not the standard square stamp. Helis, I'm really proud I've got Helis. That's the National Trust's head office. So it's in the, the old railway works at Swindon. I tried not to put any trains in this one, but, you know, it was inevitable, really. So in the old railway works at Swindon is Helis. And funny enough, next door is English Heritage. So I've got a stamp there. Um, so that's quite nice to know. And um, another one I know you cannot get. The building exists, well, because pretty much any building National Trust had will exist because they're listed. But it's Blue Coat School in London. It was an old school quite close to Victoria Station and it used to be the National Trust shop for London so I got my passport stamp there. The school's there but it's a different sort of shop. I think the National Trust own it but it's not a National Trust shop so again I don't think anyone can get that stamp anymore. So I finished this passport, when did I finish it? In, um, this is my, in, in 2012 at Fine Court, well, that was a funny one, they just had a tiny little stamp of National Trust leaf and we just wrote fine court so you know um I have been to it's, it's interesting because some say like Audley Edge in an older book it says Audley Edge stamp passports I went there last year I couldn't find anywhere to get my passport stamped so there's a few funny ones where you're not sure if you're going to get them or not but pretty much all the big properties will stamp passports and most of the small ones and then this is this was my last passport um started with a rather worn out Saltram stamp Um, I always think it's funny because it's got the word tram in Saltram, even though it is nothing to do with trams. And then I got, you know, a few in that one. Um, the one I'm particularly proud of is I went to Carlisle's birthplace um, the day before in Scotland. Um, I went to Gleelston Garden, but they didn't have a stamp. So there's no Gleelston Garden stamp. That's at Card Ross. But they did at Carlisle's birthplace. So I went there, um, you know, one day in the week after I'd been up to Scotland on my way back. It's in a funny little village called Ecclefecan. The West Coast Main Line passes through there, although Thomas Carlyle never liked anything new, such as railways, so he wouldn't have been that impressed. And I went there. Well, I didn't quite go there by train. A friend had to take me by a car who lived in the area from um, Lockerbie Railway Station. Anyway, so I went to Carlyle's birthplace. And then later on that week, I was going up to London. And that's where Thomas Carlyle had his house in London. That's also National Trust. So I thought, right... I'm going to go to Carlisle's house in London and I want to, you know, effectively hear chapter two of the story. And I'm really proud. I got 
Carlyle's birthplace and Carlyle's house on one page. Um, this is what I was saying about the funny um, stamp. See, I'm not sure where that is. It's pretty somewhere in Northumberland, but that for Northumberland with Carlyle's house, it kind of doesn't go. So that's why I, um, you know, basically stopped doing that. If you look at my last few stamps in this passport, I, I just asked them to stamp it in the middle. Um, that that's now my way of doing it. So I filled up. So as for the passports, basically certificates. I had this one on going to 28. Now it's quite unusual for people to do it twice, but so what they did, they had to put two stars on and they put twice. And I thought, what's gonna happen when I get three? So what they did, I didn't get any stars this time, but they wrote third certificate. So I've now, by then I've been to 28 properties thrice. But as, as I showed you, this is my sixth passport I'm on now. So this was my fourth certificate. The concept has changed this lovely image. It's basically like a perfect world of just ev of most of the National Trust properties. I could look at that for hours and um, you know point them all out. And then after my fourth certificate, I've got my fifth certificate. And then when this one is full up, I'll get my sixth certificate. And I'm going to keep going until I've been to all of them. And that, and that includes the Scottish ones. So National Trust is England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And there's the National Trust of Scotland. But, you know, the two overlap. If you're a member of National Trust, you can go to the Scottish properties. If you're a member of the Scottish National Trust, you can come to the English National Trust properties. So that is basically another way of collecting things. I, I basically... I don't collect stamps. Um, you know, some that's some people's hobby, and that's great if that's their hobby. I'm not a stamp stamp collector, but I'm effectively collecting visits to places. So, following on from National Trust properties, another similar thing I was doing, involving you know, effectively collecting visits, was in around late nineties, year two thousand. My family and I we started staying at youth hostels. So what I would do at youth hostels, each one has its own stamp, and you can get this little book, and um, you get a stamp at each youth hostel you go to, which, you know, I, I again found really exciting. And, and I got some youth hostels, you know, that don't exist. I think I've been to York more than any other one because every time there was an event on at National Rail Museum, I tend to go to it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I like it because I've got, like I said about National Trust properties, shops that don't exist. I've got here YHA Slimbridge. That's not there anymore. And um, what we used to do was we'd go hopping effectively. It was a good way of having a week long holiday in about three or four different places. It wasn't expensive. So we'd stay at a youth hostel, you know, and we'd go to National Trust places, go for walks, go to railways, go to the beach. And, um, you know, it was, it was a great way of doing it. So, like, on one holiday in 2002, we went to Castle Headingham in Essex. Then we went to Blacksall, a village in the middle of Suffolk. And then we moved on to Great Yarmouth. And then finally Norwich. Now, I don't think any of those four youth hostels exist anymore. So they're all stamps. You know, the Norwich one closed very soon after we visited. I remember it used to be a child's home. It was a big 1930s house. I, I expect they demolished it. I have looked since trying to work out where in Norwich it was. Because I've been to Norwich a few times, as some of you would have seen in my videos. I'd love to know where it was or if even it's still there. So if anyone knows where Norwich youth hostel was that closed in about 2002 if you could comment and tell me i'll be really grateful to hear from you so that was the first one then i got this one then i carried on you know i went to there's yha island i've since been back there made a henry's adventures video another youth hostel i've made a video out although i didn't stay there so there's no stamp um was hartington hall in the village of hartington i was in the village of hartington walked up and just said to them i just said you know can i make a video here promote you kind of thing people you know and they said oh yeah yeah go for it so i had to wander around it's a really exciting youth hostel it's a big old hall in the peak district so i made a video there the last one i stayed at was also in that area it was at dimmingsdale which is in the churnit valley so not that far about 10 miles away um so that was in 2015 I last stayed at a youth hostel, so I really should go and do some hostelling once we come out of lockdown. That's not there either, the Dimmingsdale one. Funny, the stamp says, I don't know if you can see it, but it says, I found Dimmingsdale because it was so difficult to find. So that's um, the youth hostels. And before that, there was a quite a few of passports, but that was National Trust. Um, there is no kind of, you know, you don't get a certificate when you've been to all the youth hostels. So I will get it stamped twice. So like every time I get, go to York, I get it stamped again because... It's not cheating. I wouldn't do that with National Trust properties. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little insight into my life of, you know, collecting visits 
so to speak. And, you know, when we come out of lockdown, why not go and stay at a few youth hostels, go and visit some National Trust properties? Or what you could do, you know, if you go with friends or you're, you're a couple or whoever, why not buy a passport? And like I bought my girlfriend one, and then you can have a competition between each other. I'm way ahead of my girlfriend, by the way. Um, and um, I'm a bit more in competition with my sisters. They've been, because they've been going to them all my life, and, and they're catching me up. They haven't beaten me yet, but... I first noticed people having a competition to go to National Trust property to see who could get the most. Because my plan is to get all of them, because that's the sort of person I am. I just love going to places. Um, that's why I very rarely make videos at home. It's only now when, you know, I, I can't really go out and it's the right thing to do to be at home that I'm making these kind of videos. But I remember going to Petworth House and there was these old, old ladies and they were all, you know, one of them was like, well, I've now been to my 38th National Trust property. I've been to the other ones. I was like, well, it's my 41st National Trust property I've been to. And uh, the other ones like, well, I better go and visit some more then without you. You're not coming sort of thing. So, you know, people do actually have competition. So why not do it? Why not buy yourself a passport and have a bit of a competition between your partner or your friends, you know, or your mother or your grandparents or your cousins, you know, visit national trust properties they're great places to visit anyway hope you enjoyed this video please do feel free to like subscribe comment tell your friends tell your next door neighbor about national trust properties about youth fossils about henry's adventures thank you very much for watching and goodbye